Good, Dan. How you doing? I'm okay. It's been it's been a while. You doing okay? Everything's fine. Life is good. I'm pretty happy. Uh, the oil field uh, took a big dive back in March when the COVID uh, hit. So a lot of my friends and me as well got laid off. Hmm. So it, <clears throat> it was good that I was uh, learning to do options for the previous six, seven, eight years type of deal. So it was uh, a little nervous going full time and trying to make a living. But uh, so far, it's been a year, year and a half, and it's going good. Well, good. Lane, well, you know, I invited Lane on today. Uh, maybe Lane could kind of bring us up to speed on what he's been doing and his little bit on his journey and then show you kind of the types of things he's doing and we can talk about it. But I think maybe the theme of it would be more multiple trades in the same vehicle. Would that be fair to say, Lane, or something like that? Or managing multiple trades in a the same vehicle by the Greeks or something, or how would you may better frame it? That, that's right. Uh, so basically I'm predominantly trading calendars and I can have anywhere from uh, two to six calendars on. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, especially with the past year, I kind of like to be Delta neutral on all my trades. Now you say two to six different calendars. So you might have, so six different calendars then, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And different durations and everything? They might be in the same expiration, but I might start putting uh, one calendar on at 25 days uh, to expiration. And then uh, as the, the next day or two days from then, I'd put on another one uh, at the same expiration, but I would be 24 days or 22 days to expiration. Okay. And you're not doing one contract. You might be doing 10 or more contracts each one, right? I'm doing uh, anywhere from 80 to 100. Per, each one? Per trade, yes. Okay. So you might have on, on um, at a certain time, um, you might have 700 contracts on. Would that be fair? Yeah. I'd say 500 to 600. Okay. So normal five to 600 and that brings up a good question. I remember the, the, uh, uh, Kate was talking about in, our, in the trading groups, you know, some people like to get a certain theta. When you get 500 calendars, are you talking about maybe your theta between five and 10,000? Yes. But to be honest with you, I've been, <clears throat> I've been treating them as individual trades. Okay. And- like I said in my email, I was going to sign up for a couple of mentoring sessions to get caught up with you. But yeah, um, yeah when I have no. two or three trades on, it's no big deal. I, I trade them all individual, but then you start getting up to four and five uh, just because of the environment you're in. And then all of a sudden I neutralize uh, less than one delta per contract at the end of the day. And then all of a sudden it looks it looks like one big con, uh, one big calendar. Okay, so you manage them separately. Yes, sir. So the only really the the, the only to me and, and and something we could talk more today or uh, like you said in the mentoring. But the, 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 if you had said to me, you know, would it be a big deal to manage six or seven calendars at one time? And my answer would be. 85% of the time, no. Right. It'd I be agree. fine. And it's really, and it's not the up, upside, as long as it's the typical upside, and as long as it's not an upside attached to a downside move, right? Like if we're if we're down 100 or 150 points in a week, you know, in a week and a half, or we're down, you know, most of the moves, like right now we're going near the 50-day moving average, but how many of these you know, if you look at the eight or nine moves in the last year that take us down to the 50, you know, they're all probably like 2% in SPX, right? Yeah. One and a half to 3%. Well, so those aren't a problem, but when you go down 200 points, then I'm more, that's the only time I'm concerned with the upside, right? Because if we're down two, 300 points in the SPX for a little bit of a move, right? It's that coming back that could be, you know, then you're going to get speed, right? But for the typical, you know, you know, like now going up, it's easier on the upside. So really the only 
big obstacle, not obstacle, the only challenge I see is would be managing those five trades. When we go down fast and we start getting much under two to three percent, like like let's say today, let's say today we're near the 50 day and we blast through it by 30, 40 points. Well, now you got to put the fireman hat on, right? Yes. Yeah. Now you've got six or seven calendars because I, my guess is even though they, they may be different durations and different strikes, you're still going to have to maybe play with most of them, right? I mean, but like, like I've got some multiple trades on right now. Well, what do I do? My first look is always going to be probably which, you know, if, if you said out of Lane's five or six calendars, which one is he going to have to deal with first? Well, the yeah. answer 90% of the time is going to be, well, whatever the closest expiration is, right? Exactly. Yeah. And 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 so so to me, if I've got calendars that are, you know, let's say we blow through the 50, the first batch, what I would do is I'd look at my, you know, I might just highlight, okay, I have six, six different calendars on, but one expires next Friday, right? I would look at that separate first and then back into the other ones because that's gonna be the one in problem, right? Usually. Um, but why don't you go ahead and do you wanna share your desktop and maybe just kind of give a feel of, were you able to put a few things in Think or Swim? Yes, I got yeah. my current trade in there. Yeah, why don't you um, bring, us, bring some of the folk who might not know you up to speed on the famous, uh, Lane Snell family that we love and adore <laughs> and uh, what you've been doing. I, I was just thinking as I was talking to my son about uh, you coming on today, I was just saying, you know, it made me think of your sister and uh, yep. uh, your brother Brad and everything. But anyways, uh, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you go. So do you see this screen with the like trading results for? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I joined uh, Sheridan back in uh, 2012. And like I mentioned earlier, I uh, went full time last year in March uh, 2020 because of the COVID. Uh, I went full time, but I do have several people that I talk to uh, here in Denver. And then uh, we got a couple, we have a weekly meeting with a couple other guys uh, every Tuesday. So I, there's about six people uh, in this little group that we have. And it's just kind of nice uh, to get their opinion on what's going on with the market. And a good, uh, some of them or most of them, they're, in the community, right? Like, they're all in the community. You yeah, got yeah, uh, guys. Steve Baziago. You got uh, Jeff Richardson. The the vets. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm not alone, uh, and that's really helped me a lot. Uh, the first few years, I'm trying to figure everything out, and it's just nice to have some more experienced people say, "Well, don't don't get too worried about this, but you should be looking at this type of deal." Similar to the conversation we just had. So that's been helpful. Uh, my main trade for the last year and a half has been calendars. <clears throat> so here's my 2020, 21. So you can see that 80% of my trades are typically calendars. Yeah. Well, why is that a big deal? I'll have another slide coming up. But this is 2020 where the IV uh, hit a point of 80 some percent. Mm -hmm. And I was putting a lot of these calendars on <clears throat> at IVs of 40 and 30. Wow. Okay. And then I just kind of worked it all the way down. Okay. Very simple trading uh, rule uh, managed by the Greeks. I really loved uh, those classes that you gave a long time ago about managing by the Greeks. Yeah, You made the comment a long time ago. Uh, a lot of beginners want the secret trading rules or trading guidelines. And I was the same way. I wanted to know what the latest and greatest was, and I stuck by those rules. But what I found uh, when I went full time is, yeah, those are great rules. Um, but I've kind of developed my own rules based on the environment and just my better understanding of how calendars work uh, and when to get worried and when not to get worried, things like that. Yeah. So I have a simple 8% eight, 8 target profit. <clears throat> 10% max loss. And basically I'm adjusting by diagonalizing them. 
Okay. Uh, so and the upside or downside? Both. Okay. So typically, uh, I like the open interest. So I I predominantly do call calendars. And so what Lane's talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, Lane, he's just using a credit spread or a vertical adjustment, right? If we go down yes, and you're doing, do you do mostly call calendars? Yes, sir. Okay. So Lane on the downside is going to diagonalize the calendar and reduce his downside risk by adding call credit spreads. And on the way up, Lane is going to reduce his risk and the upside by buying a call vertical, right? Yes. All right. So go ahead, Lane. Yeah, go ahead. And, 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 it it kind of reminds me of Jay's uh, mango butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Are you just moving your shorts up and down in order to control your delta? Okay. So that just hit me last night when I was putting this together. It's like, well, this is the same thing as Jay's mango. Yeah. Now tell me, maybe, maybe share with the class, what's the reason, like on the upside, you know, with your learning, why don't you versus some of the other adjustments on the, like on the upside, you could add a calendar 30 points up on the adjustment point. Yes. Uh, or you could add a butterfly, but usually on the upside of calendar. On the downside, maybe you could add a calendar or a butterfly um, at the adjustment point, 30 points lower. What, what has gotten you more comfortable with this adjustment versus some of the other conventional ones? Mainly, it's just uh, I got frustrated putting on that much more capital up on the upside, <clears throat> and then it would move back down, and I have that big loss on that cap, that calendar on the top side. So I was doing uh, double diagonals uh, way back when, those weekly double diagonals, and yeah. I kind of fell in love with double diagonals just because of the flexibility of moving stuff around without yeah. adding a lot more, more capital. And Steve Baziago is the one that uh, enlightened me on, on just moving my shorts. So you got to blame Steve. That's good. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But, no, Steve and Jeff have been doing it. And, and, and I've, I'm been doing more of that on the downside, but, and then the upside, upside, you know, a lot of times, you know, adding the calendars, but I agree with you. One of the concerns you're right. You add calendars on the upside. Not that we've been going down that much, but if you go back down, you know, you've got all that extra stuff on the upside, right? Yes. And, Which, it's just, and I don't have to move a lot. So uh, if I start off, say, 100, 100 contracts, I don't have to sell 50 and put on another 50 contract calendar on the upside. I can just move 10, 15 uh, shorts up or down. And then when it swings back the other way, like it did uh, on the trade that I'll show you, uh, I'm still up. I, I, I don't take a big hit on my p &L. So that's yeah, really- well, You made really a good helpful. point. I think what people don't understand is when you, when you go down and you add some diagonals to cut your deltas down some, right? And then if we rebound in the next two days or so, you're- selling that call credit spread above the market. So when we come back and you get a couple of days of time decay, it can work out nice. It does. A lot of times it does. And even in the same day. Um, so like yes, yesterday when it went up to uh, whatever it was, 44.80, and then it went all the way back down to 44.20 or 40, uh, I had to make an adjustment. But at, at the end of the day, after I made my adjustment to the downside, um, I was still up for that particular trade compared to where I was the, the previous day. So oh, I, I, okay. I think I, I capture some of that higher short type of deal. Uh, and when it comes back out, as far as the, the P and L it, 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 I'm up one or 2% from where I, I started before the down move. Yeah. And, and just that feeling, you know, it's just getting in a routine, but it, but it's, 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 it sticks more with your stomach that says, if something's going against me, um, decrease the capital. But, you know, I mean, the, the, I, I don't think there's, I think it's what's best for somebody because, you know, one of the positives that you could look at, okay, we start with a calendar, we go up, we double the position, we go down, we add more, you know, flies or whatever, but 
one of the positives is when you get to an adjustment point, you only have half your capital on, right? Yes. If you look at it that way, but then, but then you're starting with, with less of your capital, right? Whereas you're starting with your, I'm not going to say maximum, but you're starting, you know, if you have a hundred thousand and you're trading 80 of it, I'm just throwing that out there. You're trading 80. Whereas if, if someone says, okay, I'm going to double my capital on every adjustment on a hundred grand account, you got to start at almost 40 or 50, right? Or, or right. because, because you're going to double, but th then the problem is, I mean, let's face it, 60% of the time when we do these trades, you're going to make your money with probably no adjustments, right? Right. And then, and then if you're, and then if your idea is to, okay, I always double it. Well, geez, I, the 60% of the time that it works out, you're going to say, Boy, I wish I was my normal size. <laughs> you know, it goes. Right. So it is. Uh, well, one it, of my trading partners, uh, he likes to scale in. Okay. And, and, he, and he went through, he, he goes through that as well. Uh, when he has to add and he finally gets everything in there, he's, he's great. But if he hits his uh, profit target with only half the capital, then he only makes half the, half the amount that he could have made. Uh, exactly. And I went down that road uh, a long time ago and I just kind of, I want to be all in or all out type of deal. Yeah. Hey, Lane, a couple of quick questions. Varen said, would today would be a good, would today be a good day to diagonalize it? Yes. It, 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 it all depends on what you're doing with your, uh, like I said, on this, on this, on my chart there, or my PowerPoint, when I start getting down uh, one to two deltas per contract or down two to 3% of my P and L, I'm a, I'm a diagonalizing. Okay. So you don't wait. So you don't wait till we get to the break evens. No, you're sir. being proactive. Yes. And that's the other question I had for you. And we've discussed it in our trading group is, are we over adjusting? Well, and let me we ask you, I can, I can give you a couple of questions. And let me just ask you something. So, so Lane says when he's down two to 3% of the PL or one to two Delta Contra, explain that. So are you saying on the downside, when you get one to two, to, so let's say you start a calendar neutral, when your per contract gets to two deltas long, is that what you're saying? Yeah. And, and a lot of times uh, I'm, I'm looking to adjust at 1% and it all depends. Just like you were saying, if I put a calendar on and I've had two days of not adjusting, that is usually up two to 3% or 4% profit. So I'm not so eager to adjust that. So on, on those where I haven't made an adjustment and it's up two to 3%, I'll wait until that two Delta before I, I adjust. I got you. So the but other I, ones, so here's the question. So on average, you know, a lot of people, if they're going to turn into a double calendar or add a butterfly, you can wait near the break even, right? Because even if you're down yeah. 10%, you're only down five, but so what, what have you found when you're typically adjusting? Are you 10 points from the break even when you're doing something here? So two questions. First one is, how far do you notice you're from the break even when you do some type of an adjustment? I, I, uh, I understand where that's coming from, uh, but I actually look from where I put on my trade. So the trade that I'll show you, I put on at 44.40. And then uh, a day ago or two days ago, it went, it ran up to 44.85. Well, so let's see that. Let's see, do you, do you have that trade? So, but you're generally putting them on at the money, right? Yes, sir. All right. So 44.30, it gets up to 44.85. Yep. So you're maybe 15 points, 10, 15 from the break even. Would that be fair? True. Yeah. The way I would look at it is, is when I'm getting about 30 points away from, where I initialized it. Okay. So I put it on at 44.40. If it gets up to 44.70, that's usually in the place where uh, I need to adjust. And it's not really that, that distance. It's basically my P&L. Is it, is it above that one to two gotcha. delta? Or is it is it knocking down my P&L by two to 3% type of deal? All right, now let me ask you. Now, Here's the big question that was on my mind. When you come to an adjustment, are you making, because <clears throat> most of your, would you say your typical duration on your shorts 
is what? 15, 20 days, 30, 40? Yes, it's uh, basically 17 to 25 days. That's my sweet spot. I, I right. love those things. <laughs> and then maybe seven days further out. Yes, sir. Okay. So here's the question. When you make an adjustment, are you cutting your position deltas down a third, a half, or more? I've uh, hung on to your, your comment uh, that you've made over the years. When you're down at uh, 16 days or below 16 days to expiration, I'm usually cutting it by uh, at least 70 to 80%. Or I think even, even neutralize it. Yeah, I think that's fine. The only thing that's <clears throat> sticking out to me, and again, you've been doing this. So, you know, you're, you're more up on all the nuances of how you've been doing it. But the thing that pops at me is saying, I have no problem with being proactive on the adjustments, right? I mean, yes, that's a good way to say it. Yeah, you're being proactive, but if I'm being proactive, my gut would tell me cut the position deltas down maybe a half, right? Or, you know, I, I get it. Typical for short term trades that you do. If I, you know, if you're making an adjustment, I'm like, cut the deltas, deltas two thirds to zero. But that's making an assumption you're adjusting near the break evens, right? Here, if you're coming earlier, I don't know if I'd go two thirds because in that case, well, let me ask you, you would know better than I would. Did, have you found yourself over adjusting or what have you, what, what, what's your view on that? It's kind of a hangover from, from last year when we had average <laughs> true ranges of, of 40, uh, 40, 50 points type of deal. So at the end of those days, I would kind of neutralize all my calendars. And then the next day it would swing the other way. Um, but my win loss, yes, I think I'm over adjusting, but then if I look at my win loss ratio, I'm 70, 30. So, so you're doing good and you're keeping your losers pretty good. Yes. So when would you do the second adjustment? Same thing. So once again, my, my max loss is 10%. Gotcha. So I do it in like in thirds. When it goes to minus two to three or to 4%, I want to make sure that I got a good adjustment. And then when it drops down to six or seven, I'll make a second adjustment. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I like this, you know, being proactive. I mean, I, I, I'm more like that in, in reality, but I'm just concerned. I mean, you'll know how long you've been doing this style. The last since March of 2020. Okay, so so over so you've done this over a over a market that's had quite a bit of diversity, right? Yes. So I would, you know, again, even though there's some thing, and I'd have to get more see you in action, but I would say, you know. Since you, with that information, you've been doing this since March. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. A couple more questions. It's, um, Kevin says, how close will you take a trade to expiration? So um, I always remember your comment about you never get to go to Disneyland, <laughs> but uh, you get down to eleven days. I I typically trade the Friday expirations. So you go from eleven uh, seven days down and if you hold it over the weekend then all of a sudden you got four days to trade on monday right yeah and it looks fantastic uh that's when you got all that data coming in but it's hard to control especially in this environment where you go down like yesterday we ran up and then we ran down and then we ran back up yeah so there's a big swing in there that you can't control with four days left or oh, even se seven days are difficult so I like to be out as soon as I can, which is around 14 to say 12 days. Before expiration? Ideal. Yes. Okay. No, you're right. I mean, I don't like going into the expiration week just because the Greeks get crazy. And, and if I do, I will separate, you know, if I'm like nine days from expiration, I will separate that calendar from the rest of the family because yes. it's, it's like, you know, it gets really weird those last nine days in terms of yes everything. There's nothing wrong with holding some, but it, again, it's all a comfort thing. So, exactly. 
All right, that makes sense. And then John said, are the verticals you show, um, are the verticals you show simply to account for prior adjustments and make the PL graph graph accurate? So this is the simulated trade. You're seeing my toss, right? Yes. So here's my initial calendar at 44.40. Yes. So then uh, the next day it, it ran all the way up here to 44.85. So yeah. that's when I put on this one to cut the deltas uh, a little, uh, probably down like the two thirds to 80% type of deal. Cause I right. just had a feeling that the market was continuing to go up, which as you can see, I was wrong, but that's okay. Uh, I'm still up on the trade and this morning uh, it came back down to the 44 area. So if I didn't do that adjustment uh, a couple of days ago at 44.85, I could probably have been out at five or six thousand dollars, which is my okay. typical uh, dollar value, eight okay. percent. But this morning uh, it ran back down, so I basically just moved these 44.50s back down to 44.40, and this is where I'm I'm currently at. And as you can see, uh, I'm still up. Everything's fine. I got a nice weekend coming up. And these last two or three months of expiration Friday, uh, this is a typical day. Uh, the market seems to dive, or, and I'm not sure what exactly all the market guys are doing, but uh, if you look at a daily SPX chart, you'll see that this dip happens. So I'm, I'm setting good. I'm happy. I probably won't adjust this uh, until about 4410 uh, would be a place. Uh, I'd let it go towards minus one, minus two, but I would I would adjust it at that point. Okay. Um, now let me ask you when when you have like just calendars. So two questions. One, why just calendars versus anything else, and and, and just just for other people. And then the second thing, when you got all calendars on, what are your thoughts, or how do you deal with? You know, sometimes if we get some speed to the downside, the volatility will, uh, the short will, the shorts will be affected more than the longs, right? Yes. How those, you, are actually, those are actually turning out to be a buying day for me. A what, what do you call them? A what? Well, a, a, day to, a day to consider putting on another trade. If I only had one trade or two trades on and we had a down move and I was comfortable that we're coming up to some kind of support. I wouldn't have a problem putting on, in fact, this trade that you see right there um, was put on when the, the IV ran back up to 20% where, where it is now. And what that yeah. does is exactly uh, what you're talking about. The shorts are the ones that are increasing in volatility, which makes your skew go positive. Well, yeah, so you make a good point. I mean, we normally, most people normally wouldn't associate putting on calendars with a higher vol, but you make a good point on those days when the vol's higher and we've moved fast, it'll jack that short up quite a bit in relation to the long and it actually looks good. Oh, did you even write that down? What the IVs were when you did it? Well, this is actually a connection. I'm an engineer and I kind of miss working with spreadsheets. So <laughs> there's a way to dump your toss data into Excel. It's very simple. There's plenty, plenty of YouTube way, uh, videos to show you how to do it. But the re and I, that's exactly what I'm looking for is this, this line here, yeah. uh, the orange line. That's a positive skew. At the time that I put the trade on that we're looking at, it was down uh, minus or, or positive 20. There you go. Po positive 20. Typically the counters I'm, I'm looking at are in this kind of range of a minus 62, uh, minus 30 area. But when it and goes- those are, And those are like 15 by 22 days, something like that? Yeah, the shorts on the, these are 28 days with a seven, 14. So I got seven day calendars, 14 days, 21, just looking at how things are moving around. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for is the lowest skew at a good price between those two, and they're related. Um, is that short? Is that in blue where it says short DTE, long DT? Is that today yes, or when sir. you put it on? No, this is uh, today's. 
I got you. I got you. Okay. So you got every day it changes. So you will put, so, I mean, you'll put stuff on, on normal days, but you're saying, so you don't just put them on on down days because we don't get that many, but correct. You're, yes. You're saying sometimes when we get a down day, that I'm not nervous stuff. to put a calendar on. Correct. Okay, because, and the way you know it, even if people didn't look at the skew, if we're going down, it seems like your calendars are getting beaten up, right? Yes. Yes. And, and that's not an easy thing to do. Um, oh, Kevin says, how close will you take a trade to expiration? You answered that. Uh, oh, Robert says, do you normally adjust the short or the long? I do the shorts. But uh, if you talk to Steve Baziago, there's times where he'll move the long. Yeah, I, I do the I do the longs too sometimes, but you, so you'll generally roll the short put down five or ten, depending yeah, on yeah. what cut your deltas, or roll the short call up, right? Yes, yes. And then Robert said, "Do you prefer the AM expirations to the weeklies?" I do. Uh, you get a lower price. That's what you're seeing here. Is uh, well, I got a lot of stuff. These are basically all the expirations that are coming up on Fridays. Yeah. And you, you have your weeklies and then you got your monthlies. I prefer to, 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 I make all these calendars using the monthly AM. You get a better price and you get some more theta in, in my opinion and my, what I've been looking at. I'm, okay. I so you don't use the, so you don't use the weeklies. You'll use the, the AM. Yes, sir. Okay. And what is the reason again? You, you get better, what? Better price, uh, this one would probably be worth probably about 10 if I went with the, the weeklies. Okay. Uh, and the theta is the other thing. I like to get in. So here's a place where I would actually, uh, wow. So here's the beauty of the downside. And, and uh, the super trader uh, used, used to talk about it. She loved down days because she got more premium on the shorts. Well, that's, yeah. what's, that's what's happening here. So I like the 21 day area. But look at the 28 day and the 35 day. I'm still able to get some decent theta, 900, 700. My Vega is very reasonable, 45. Normally it's up in the five to sixes. So on a day like today, you're looking at what's the main thing on that spreadsheet? You're looking at the skew, right? I'm looking at the skew. Here's a positive skew. So is that is that where so you got the different combinations of trades there those aren't all the calendars you have on right well I'm, i got three i got three of them and they're all in this one i put one on at 28 days one a uh, couple days ago okay so uh, you're in the one as far as positive skews you're in one of the better ones right now correct and if i was going to put another trade on i put that i put another counter on with that expiration okay yeah the only thing when you start getting in the world of skews and tell me if you see this, is um, as you, skews are also dependent on the duration. In other words, it's easier yes. to get a positive skew. If you're looking at like seven by 14 day calendars, you get any kind of down movement. Those are easier to get a positive skew. But if you go out to like yep. 30 days out, that's very difficult to get positive skews out there, right? Yep. I mean- because like you're showing like Lane is, oh good. So yeah, this is perfect to see Lane because you can see as you go farther out, the skews get, you know, you get more of a negative skew whereas you go closer in towards Lane's, um, you know, seven by 14 or something like that. You're going to get all, it's all positive skews as you get near seven days, right? Because especially on a down day, but yeah, I think as Lane is to get a 21 versus 28 day, a little bit of positive skew. And that brings up, and we'll have to do that. We haven't done this in a while. I think maybe the next trading group next week, we'll talk about the concept of an implied volatility of a spread. Because I think to, to normal sense, wouldn't you agree, Lane? People are saying, well, I'm having a hard time getting around the fact that you would do a calendar at 20 or 21. But if, if your short is you know, 22 and your long is 19. Like what's, like the one that's a positive skew there, does it show the volatility of the short and the long? Um, I guess I could go over here. Because that's really gonna be, because if the short, 
So the short would be 1472. All right, and the long? Is 1460. Okay, so if you're doing a positive skew, the ultimate implied volatility of that spread is gonna be lower than right. the long, right? So it might be, in this case, you might say, I'm doing implied volatility in the calendar of maybe 14, right? Um, is that what the volatilities for at the, these are at the money options? They're like 14? Right. Okay. Yeah. That's, oh, in the calls. Yeah. And it'd in the be calls. Deeper. But yeah, no, this is all great. Great. Uh, Robert said, is the AM price determined at the open or the close of the previous Thursday? That's a question for you, Dan. Okay. Let me, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> is the AM price determined at the open or the close? Uh, I thought yeah, it was open. the open. Yeah. It? Like Brendan said, it's the open. Yeah. So once again, uh, it, the only control I have is when I get into the into the market. So if I don't have positive skews, I'm, I, that doesn't keep me from getting in. All I'm looking for initially is the theta, and then yeah, I mean, I'm most up. of the time you're not getting the you're not necessarily getting the positive skew, especially in an Correct. up market. You're just putting yes. the stuff on uh, pretty routinely, right? Yes. Do you try to diversify the days you put them on, like separate yes. a little bit? Okay. Yeah, I liked your concept of uh, I don't I don't know what series it was, but you were putting a trade on Tuesday, then you're putting a trade on Thursday, and your your whole point was consistency. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, put a trade on, and really uh, that's rung very true for me. I have to trade to make money. And uh, ideally, yes, this is a great day for me to put another one on. Uh, but if, if, if it wasn't like this, I would still wouldn't have any problem putting on another calendar. But I just need to put another calendar on. Um, what's the day? Third Friday. I would have put one on yesterday, but I didn't want to have too much stuff on while I was trying to talk to you today. Uh, but yeah, consistency, put them on. Yes, these are what we call blue light specials. <laughs> uh, grab it. But my normal trade is any, is like an 800 theta to a thousand theta and then uh, a skew of 36. Well, and the other good thing is this, you don't have that much on that expires next Friday, right? No. You gotta, do you have anything on? No. See, that's, that's where the PL. So if you look at Lane's PL for today, my first thought was, well, why is this PL up? Well, the difference is I'm looking at my calendars and my PLs down. And you say, well, why is that? It's because I have more stuff on, unfortunately, this one, um, that expire next Friday, right? So Lane's PL isn't going to be as cockeyed when you get a 35 point down day, right? If you right. show your think or swim again, and you normally enter your calendars at the money, right? Yes. Okay. So Lane's PL even today, he's up $1,600, right? Well, yep. if you look at his closest expiration, he's got Ock. Well, is that the only calendar you have on is the Ock 8 right now? Yep. So I got three, three of those. Yeah. Three so calendars. Ock 8 is how many days out today? Uh, 21. All right. So the reason his PL is not even blinking with the SPX down 36 is because he's about 21 days out. But let's be honest, folk, if Lane had 86 calendars on that expired next Friday, yes, he'd have enough theta to kill a horse, a cow, and a mule, but his PL would be down quite a bit. Exactly. And so to you know, keep a little bit of sanity, um, do you put any trades on Friday? I, I put on trades when there's an opportunity to put on a trade. But okay. if I already have three or four trades on, I'm not eager to put it on on Friday. Okay. So right now your delta is your 45, 44 deltas long, 1800 theta. And you got a calendar on it. You've already made a couple adjustments, right? Yes, sir. Now let me ask you a question. When did you adjust? I mean, when did we need to adjust? Yesterday or early? Um, I put it on 44.40 on Tuesday. Of this week? Of this week. And then it ran up 
uh, Wednesday to 80 something. And then it went, went all the way. And that's when I adjusted to the upside. Oh, that's so that first adjustment, 44, 40, 40, 50 was actually an upside adjustment. Yes, sir. Okay. And then when it came back down to this morning, I put this one on. Okay. So, so someone might say, well, boy, you get whipped around, but it's not, it's not really like that. Right. I mean, yes, yes. You sold the, you sold the, the one vertical for less than you bought the other. Right. Right. So you'd say that's a negative scalp. You could call it right. Yes. But in the context of the entire position, which is what we have to look at, you're still up money on this thing. Right. And it's, and it's Friday. Yeah. And so, it's, so I yeah. got, I got the weekend. Uh, yeah. And I realize it, it doesn't translate 100%, but there is a benefit, uh, maybe not Monday morning at uh, 7.30 when the market opens up here, but at the end of the day, you do get that benefit of the weekend coming in. Yeah, and it, it's like people will say to me, you know, when I buy a put, and what if the market goes back up? I said, well, well, you know, whatever adjustment you do, it's part of the whole family. It's like you adopt a kid, you don't go to a restaurant and say, Here's my two real kids. Here's my adopted kid. Nice. These are my three kids. So you don't say, you know, Lane doesn't say I've got the calendars separate from my day. It's all, once he makes an adjustment, it's part of the family. It's one And then we'll make an adjustment. Jim says, what makes a good, you talk about a good opportunity to trade for you. How would you put that's, that in words? That's basically back to my, my little spreadsheet. That's what I thought. Yeah. I like I like this range of theta, 800 to 17. And then if you can get it farther out, normally this doesn't happen. Uh it, this kind of theta or eleven hundred happens about 16 days out, but I got 21 days. So and and then you got the gamma that's lower. So let's just compare a 14. My gamma is at uh 380. If I could put this 28 day on with a gamma of 1.5, and that's just a flattening of your T plus zero line. That gives that lets me handle these, these swings back and forth a little bit better, but I'm also getting this theta. That's to me, that's good theta. This down here, uh, it's it's too low. I, I it's like watching paint dry type of deal. But again, but again, would it be fair to say because I don't want people thinking, you know, again, most of the stuff that Lane wouldn't do is the shorts are further out than we would do anyways, right? Right. So, you know, the main thing is, even if you didn't use that thing, not the thing, what's like a spreadsheet, it still would work, right? This is just, this is just sharpening the pencil even better. Yes. But, you know, again, Lane's doing, you know, his shorts are always between would you say 15 and, and 30 days or 15? Right. Yeah, I would say any of these three right here would be yeah. looking good. Yeah, but you know, the, the principles, folks, of why Lane's doing well is the risk management. He's, cons you know, as I always say, he's, he's consistent putting them on, number one. Number two, um, controlling the he's, delta. He's controlling the deltas. And uh, which even if you didn't use this, he still would have done well. My only question would be, okay, if you're just doing calendars, does it bother you when VIX goes over 20 or something? Or, or yeah. are you more picky? Or how do you deal with the different, how does VIX influence you? It doesn't anymore. It doesn't. Okay. Um, because you're looking at it. Yeah, and again, I agree as you're a, uh, a veteran trader, you can trade around that stuff or go ahead. You, you, oh, you have a chart for that. Beautiful. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So this, this is the big drop in March of uh, 2020. The IV went up to 82 and I was unemployed. Uh, I had to figure out a way to make money. And I really don't remember how it all unfolded because uh, uh, Jeff Bayless started getting together with me and then Greg Med Medellin and then, uh, uh, Mr. Baziago, we were starting to trade when the IV was up in 40. 
Yeah, and, and in the community, we were low. Yeah, we were doing it. And I, I think the main key, the only thing I would say on that, tell me if you agree, is when the vowels are high, you just kind of look at the range, right? Like, like right now, if you look at the VIX, to me, the range, you know, let's say a two month range or whatever. The two month range might be 15 to 24. I don't know, whatever. Yes. The yes. So when you're talking about a 20, even today, right? It's not dangerous, right? I mean, it, it's, it's not crazy, right? Especially when you're doing 15 day uh, calendars because you're getting some good theta, right? Now, if, if, if it was 24 today, that might cause me pause. But even like in Lane's graph there, in that period, we were trading calendars, but we were at least, hey, waiting on updates, but we were looking at the range currently, right? So yes, even though we we're doing 40 IV, if you look at the two-month range at the time, the two-month range might have been 40, 80, right? Yes. And yes. so... So it's all relative, right? And, it, and, and as that, as we start, as the VIX started going lower, we would adjust it. So there's nothing wrong, you know, uh, with doing, you know, we did a lot of calendars or, and Mark uh, spearheaded that with the vowels higher because you get wider break evens, but it's all okay, up days, you know, and that's why it's so important to trade what's in front of us, right? Yes. You know, we're, we're, we're trading the market right now, right? Reality. And right now, you know, we still haven't blown through the 50. So you still have to assume we're, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're in an uptrend, right? And uh, at this point, right? We're right around the 50 now, I think, aren't we? 44, 35. Yeah, I don't have it on this chart. But the key is a 20 VIX isn't, you know, is it really bad, right? Um, right? I'm not saying today, you know, with this VIX up 170, unless it was like something, you know, Lane mentioned, okay, on a day like today, I probably wouldn't do a calendar, but using the, the chart here, something with a good skew, I might take a shot with that, right? Yes. But I would be on a day like today, I might, you know, if you're just looking at all trades, as long as we're kind of, holding the, the, you know, the support here, I'd probably be looking at a put credit spread or more like an all put flat fly where my deltas are closer to zero, right? Um, you know, unless I, because you got to go with the probabilities, right? I mean, how many times, you know, in the last seven months or eight, have we gone down one or 2%? I mean, that's the typical down move. And then we've come back. Now you say, well, one of these can turn into a five or six. Yeah, but you know, if we start blowing through the 50, then we'll adjust, right? But we yes. can't live, you know, it's like saying, you know, Lane's in, are you in Colorado still? Yes, sir. Well, you can't say, okay, Lane shouldn't go outside. Why? Because there's going to be an avalanche and kill him. Well, you know, there's a lot of living to do, right? I mean, A, he might, this might be one of my worst analogies, but um, but you get the idea. You, you have to trade in front of you, especially if you're trying to make a monthly living. Um, well, what this positive skew does for you. So yeah, people go, well, what if it runs back up? I got a positive skew. So that short is going to lose money. So instead of going from 44, uh, 40 to 44, 70 or 80, uh, I can let it run a little bit farther and still have a decent P&L type of deal. And then, then at 44.80, I adjust it into a diagonal and another diagonal. And then pretty soon I end up having a diagonal instead of a calendar. And those and are very it, forgiving. Oh yeah. And then if it goes down, you know, again, most of the time you're not going to get whipped, but you know, maybe 15% of the time you get whipped, it goes the other way, but that's, that's part of what you signed up for, right? Yes. <laughs> We're know. traders. We trade. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you trade, but you know, you look at the majority of the time, it shouldn't be that bad. Um, folks, I've got to run here in about four minutes. And I know people would love Lane to stay on for about 12 hours. But um, let me just get a few last questions. Let's see. Do you plan or do you lighten up a bit prior to Wednesday's Fed press conference next week? Um, 
it all depends on uh, how many trades I have on. If I have something that's at five or six percent, I'll take that one off. Okay. Uh, but the other ones I'll leave on. Um, I, I, I can handle swings. Okay. And Jim says, can you tell me where or how I could get the info to set up that kind of a spreadsheet from TOS? Just uh, go to YouTube and yeah. type, type in TOS to Excel or something like that. It's just okay. one simple function. And then you can create your own, your own uh, spreadsheet. So all this okay. is, there's that function. All it's saying is I want to go to TOS real-time data. And I want to look at the mark. And I want to look at the mark for SPX. So it's a very simple thing. Uh, in fact, just copy that that formula and open up an Excel spreadsheet. And as long as your toss is open, just start working with that one, one thing and then you can build a spreadsheet however you want. All right, well, I appreciate Lane. Uh, on a personal matter, uh, it, it was, you know, I miss talking to the Snells. And so it was good to get my Lane fix for today. And uh, as always, uh, Lane's a, a friend of mine and we've known each other for a long time. So thankful to have Lane. Brendan said, what's your biggest percent drawdown in the last year? Uh, I would have to look. Uh, to be honest with you, I've been down like minus 25%, but I've stuck with it based on what I thought was going to happen. So 25% on an individual trade, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now why on that? Okay, normally your max loss is what? 10%. 10 okay. So those are the um, days where I'm too close to expiration. I'm at 11 days, and then we have a big 50-point move down. Okay, and, and you choose, away. instead of getting out at the max loss, you choose to stay in because you know the vowels just got wacky, right? Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll neutralize my delta for sure. Uh, it, it could be buying a stinking put. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or it could just be uh, a nice full diagonal. But yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't run, once again, there's all kinds of variables to when to get out. Uh, and it's always a pleasure to go from minus 20 to back to minus 10% and definitely getting out at minus 13 type of deal. So, but it's yeah. mainly, it's mainly, I mean, would it be fair to say you're generally pretty good? You're trying to make 8%, your max loss is what? 10. 10. But really the only ones where you have that kind of unusual situation would be stuff that gets, start getting very close to expiration. Yes. Right? And that's why I'm, I'm trying to stay away from those things. Because even like, like today, VIX is up 1.30. We're down 33 points. Not a huge speed day, but a good, not even 1% yet. But Lane's stuff, because he's at least two to three weeks out, I think he's three weeks out on his. Yes. On his so you're three weeks out on your shorts. Your longs are how far out? Another oh, seven, seven days eight? out on that. So 28. Okay. All right. Well, we'll cut this off and maybe sometime in the future, we'll have a, uh, a part two and maybe we can drag uh, Lane to come on with uh, one of his siblings. But um, <laughs> good to have Lane. Thank you so much, Lane, for sharing all this good stuff with us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. All See right. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks.